often been asked how to create a user activity feed in Rails like the one you can find on GitHub here. Uh, this is great for social networking style applications so we can see what other users have been up to. First of all, let me show you what I've got so far. This is a cookbook application where users can share recipes. They can create a new recipe or edit their own recipes or add comments to them or they can even mark other users as friends. So I'm currently signed in here so I can add this user as a friend. And what I would like to do is add an activity page to this application where I can see all the activity of my friends to see what they've been up to, whether it be posting new recipes or adding comments. Here I'm going to show you how to accomplish this using the public activity gem. And kudos to the author, it has some really great documentation, but let me walk you through the setup quickly here. The first thing I'll do is go into the gem file of my app and add the public activity gem here, and you'll need to run the bundle command to install it. Next, you'll need to run a generator provided by the gem called public activity migration. And then we can run that migration. So what this will do is create an activities table because it has an active record model for managing it. Now public activity is also compatible with Mongoid and these steps aren't necessary there. Uh, check out the documentation for details on that setup. The next step is to go into any model that you want to track the activity of, such as our recipe model here, and include this module called public activity model. And then you can call tracked after that, and what that will do is set up some callbacks to automatically create some activity records after this model is uh, created, updated, or destroyed. So I'm going to do this in the comment model as well because I want to track comments in this app. So with what I have so far, if I do anything to this app, such as add a comment, then it's going to be automatically tracked by public activity. Now all I need to do is make a page that displays this activity. So I'll generate a new controller for this page. Let's call it activities and give it an index action. Next, I'll go into the routes file for this app because I need to do some cleanup here. Instead of the route that was generated, I want a resource route called activity. So it will set up the path to the activities controller that was generated. So what I want in here is to list out all the activities that are provided by the gem. To do that, we can call public activity activity, and that will return the active record model so we can query the database like we would normally. Let's order the results by the created add in descending order so that the most recent activities show up first, and let's store this in an instance variable. Now we just need to loop through this in the view, so uh, let's call this uh, friends activities and then let's go through that activities. And so for each of these, let's just for now uh, inspect this activity to see what's involved. Now visiting slash activities brings up our page with our activity inspection. And here we can kind of see the different attributes that are assigned. We have something called trackable ID and trackable type columns on the database, which means that this is a polymorphic type association. So this knows it's a comment model that is tracking. Now there are a couple of other polymorphic associations on here as well. There's recipient and owner. Now owner is a user that performed the action. So we'll want to fill this in so that we can display the user's name next to their activity. Let's do that next. Now I mentioned earlier that this gem uses callbacks in the model to record the activity, but that presents a problem because the model layer doesn't have access to the current user, so how do we set the owner when we record the activity? Well, uh, public activity has a workaround for this problem. Let's go to the application controller. And then at the top of this class, let's include a module called public activity store controller, which will record the controller on each request, allowing us to access it on the model. So going back to the comment model, we can do this by adding an option to the tracked call called owner. And if we set this to uh, lambda, we can this will be evaluated each time it tracks activity. And this will pass in the controller and the model as an argument. So that's going to be the comment model. So that way we can set this owner to the controller's current user. Now this does present a little problem though. Current user is a private method on our controller, so it's not considered an action. You can see that on our application controller here. There's our current user method. So let's move this outside of the private call and then we can call uh, hide action current user. So that way it's not considered a controller action. Now another potential issue is that in the model, this is going to raise an exception if we try to create a record outside of the current request because there won't be a controller. So you'll probably want to check if controller is not nil before uh, sending the current user method. 
Overall, I'm not really a fan of this workaround because it feels kind of ugly accessing the controller in the model and we have sort of ugly edge cases like this. But it works for now, so let's just copy this into the recipe model. Now let's give this a try by making a new comment. And now if we go to the activities page, we can see there are actually two records here. And the first one in the list is actually the most recent, which is going to include the owner ID now. So let's fix up this view so it nicely displays the activities. So back in our activities template, I'll remove this inspection and make a div with the class of activity. And the first thing I want to do here is display the user's name and a link. So that's going to be the activity owner. And uh, let's only display that if we actually have an activity owner because we do have that nil record still in there. And then next I want to describe the activity, which can be a little bit difficult because each one is unique. But uh, for now I'm just going to hard code this for adding a comment. So let's say added comment to, and then I want to display the name of the recipe inside of here. So to do that, to grab the recipe record, we need to go through activity.trackable because remember that's that polymorphic association which will reference the model that activity is for, in this case the comment model, so we can call recipe on that and then we can link to that recipe. Now I would like to add some styling for this, so let me do that really quickly here. I'll just paste in some CSS. And if I reload this page, then we get our activities. So the top one here shows the name with the user. Uh, this one doesn't because uh, the user record was nil. So this is looking pretty good, but we're currently hard coding this description, so how do we change it depending on the type of activity? Well, we can use a helper method provided by the gem. So instead of doing this here, we can call render activity and then pass it the activity record. And what this will do is render out a partial for this specific activity action. And this will look in a directory called public activity under views. And then inside of here, we need to make a new directory uh, for each different model that we're tracking. So in this case, a comment model. And then we can make a new partial called uh, create .html.arb. And then we can describe this activity like we did before, but now we can uh, define additional partials for the different types of activities. There we go, I've added a separate partial for each activity we track, create, update, and destroy on each of the models, comments, and recipes. And I've also performed some activities off camera so we can see what they look like. Now everything looks good, except what if I try to remove a record? For example, if I destroy this recipe that was created, uh, then go to the activities page again, well, I get this exception. And the issue is that I'm saying that we added a recipe and referring to activity.trackable, but this is going to be nil because we destroyed the record. So it's important that in every activity partial where you're referring to activity.trackable that you take into consideration that it might not exist. So let's wrap this in an F else condition to make sure that activity.trackable exists. And then we can perform that or else say uh, which has since been removed or something like that. And now reloading this page, it will work. And it says that we added a recipe which has since been removed. All right, uh, next I wanna show you how you can exclude certain actions. For example, updating comments aren't really that interesting and we might not wanna show them in the activities. What we can do is pass an option to the tracked call in the comment model, uh, either accept or only is allowed. So we can say accept update, and that way we only get the create and destroy activities on our comment model. However, this tracked method is starting to get pretty complex with all these options, and I honestly don't really like performing activity tracking through callbacks on the model. So instead, I much prefer to handle the tracking through the controller instead of the model. So to do that, we can include the public activity common module instead of the model module, and then disable the tracking here so it doesn't automatically add activities through callbacks. And next we can go into the comments controller, and whenever we successfully save or destroy a comment, we can record that activity by calling comment.createActivity and then passing in the activity name such as create. And then we can pass in any other options such as the owner and setting it to the current user. I like to do this much more because uh, it gives us a lot more control over when and how the activities are created. And it means we don't have to do that workaround for setting the current user. And so let's do this for destroying the comment as well. And this also makes it nice because you can uh, create custom activities very easily. 
All right, I think our activities are looking really good now. Uh, one more thing to finish this up, though, is that we're supposed to be displaying our friends' activities instead of everyone's activities. I can do that by adding a scope to our activities controller, uh, calling where here. We can say we want our owner ID to be within the current user friend IDs. And because owner can be a polymorphic association, it's probably a good idea to make sure the owner type uh, matches user as well. So now I don't see any uh, friend activities, but if I log out and log in as another user, and then if I add me as a friend, then I can go to the activities page and there the activities show up because I'm a friend. Well, that's it. I think this activity page is done. You probably want to add the time the activity took place and some icons and such to pretty it up. Now, there are some things that I didn't go over about the public activity gem, so be sure to check out the README for further information on that. That's it. Thanks for watching.